In the U.S., highways have become such an important aspect to almost everybody's day-to-day life. They take vehicles to where they need to be with as much efficiency as possible. Throughout history, it feels like these highways have just gotten more and more important. Now, obviously, geography and roads go hand-to-hand, and I think it's really interesting seeing the more specific ways that rivers, lakes, valleys, mountains, and other geography-related things affect how highways were planned and built. Before the video starts, though, I want to quickly tell everyone to join our Discord server. Discord is a text and voice chatting app, and our community spends a lot of time on there. So if you want to interact with me or other fans of the channel, click the link in the description to join. Thank you. So as I said before, obviously every factor of highway building is related to geography in some way. Firstly, bodies of water and fitting areas for resources and trade are what shaped a lot of historic American cities. And the biggest thing that results in new highways are cities. Looking at the east, it feels like there's a pretty straight line of cities off the coast of the Atlantic, making it easy to connect with one highway. This is called the Fall Line, an incredibly interesting area that seems invisible to people looking at a map. The Fall Line is the area where the coastal plain meets the Piedmont Plateau, basically where land starts to become more hilly as it nears the Appalachian Mountains. Because of this geological change, rivers that crossed the line saw a lot of rapids and waterfalls. Because of this, river boats weren't able to travel further upstream, and the energy released by the river also made good locations for watermills and sawmills. This is the most major reason that there are several major cities along this line. Because of this, I-95 follows the line for a long period across the mid-Atlantic and northeast passing through Richmond, Washington, Baltimore, Philadelphia, New York, and Boston. Staying in the Northeast, you can look at the relatively straight line between Boston and Buffalo, going through several other major cities, and that line would be I-90. This is something found all over the country, because most of the time, roads follow the population. Now, I know it's not a highway, but another instance would be surveying in the Midwest which resulted in the square road layouts across the eastern Great Plains in Iowa, Minnesota, Wisconsin, Illinois, Indiana, Ohio, Michigan, as well as the states further west. This is only possible because of the flat, fertile landscape of these areas, which made building these roads in the one mile by one mile layout easy. But anyways, getting into more specific parts of this, let's start by talking about one of the most major elements of geography that shapes roads, which is rivers. In Nebraska, I-80 into I-76 has a very interesting route. Starting in the east, it passes through Omaha before traveling to the south to find Lincoln, which is actually an interesting outlier for this topic, because the downtown isn't situated on Salt Creek, and the city wasn't necessarily built around the river either, instead being founded to be the state's capital. Anyways, from Lincoln, it goes west basically completely straight, being the longest straight stretch of interstate in the country at 75 miles. This is another thing that has to do with geography, because the land there is flat and unforested, meaning there just wasn't anything to go around as it looked to connect to Grand Island. But near Grand Island, it reaches the Platte River, which it follows until the Colorado border. This makes sense, because the geography of Nebraska becomes more challenging off of the Platte River, so near the river was where the population was situated, as well as the only place where building an interstate was feasible. In Idaho, we can focus more on the population aspect of that. I-84, 86, and 15 form a U-shape throughout the southern part of the state, going from Ontario, Oregon, to Nampa, to Boise, to Twin Falls, to Pocatello, to Idaho Falls, and then north into Montana. This is just because of the Snake River, which, as you can see, forms the same U-shape as it passes the major cities. Another reason why highways follow rivers brings us into our next topic, which is mountains. In mountainous regions, it is incredibly common for roads to follow along rivers through valleys, because it's the only place possible. In Colorado, there's too many examples for me to just say specific instances. But if you've ever driven in the central part of the state, you know what I'm talking about. Places like State Highway 14 or State Highway 82. This also makes for interesting roads, because the Continental Divide passes through the state. So if highways want to keep going east to west, they are forced to go over mountain passes without their rivers. 
For the two highways I just mentioned, we see Independence Pass at 12,000 feet and Cameron Pass at 10,250 feet. In Rocky Mountain National Park, US-34 is forced to just go right over the mountains on Trail Ridge Road, an iconically terrifying stretch of official US highway that I've been on way too many times. In West Virginia, the interstates do their best to travel through small valleys across the Appalachian Plateau while not having too much impact on the already built cities. In that state, most of the population was built directly next to rivers and the valleys because the mountainous terrain in the bulk of the state was simply not fit for these cities. This meant there wasn't much room for large interstates along the populated regions, and they were forced to make do. In the Charleston metro, I-64 does its best to follow the Kanawha River without major impact. It goes off of it for short periods, and then hugs the mountain's edge for other portions. Crossing where it has to and continuing until it has to turn off of that and follow other valleys and creeks. These difficult conditions also result in expensive and grand freeways. The highway I just mentioned in West Virginia looks incredible as it comes out of Charleston through the mountains. There just isn't a lot of room for them to fit something like this, so it's interesting to see how they were able to. Moving north, the Pennsylvania Turnpike chooses to just go straight through the mountains using tunnels. This works well here because the mountains are thin and steep, and it was the only viable way to do it. Now, I know you guys have been waiting for me to mention it, but now let's talk about I-70 in Colorado. This is the interstate that, in my opinion, is most affected by terrain. It was a route that needed to be connected for the sake of growth and traffic in Denver. Giving such a major metro a connection to the west probably resulted in a lot of growth for the city, actually, which could have also resulted in even more local highways. Anyways, the way that the route would be completed was incredibly complicated. It would start by following a valley upwards into the mountains. This isn't the most difficult part at all. It passes Idaho Springs, where the mountains start to get steeper, and the valley starts getting narrower. There just isn't a lot of area for them to build this freeway, which made it very complicated. Continuing up the valley, it finally reached the Continental Divide at Loveland Pass, where it was forced to tunnel under the massive mountain for 1.7 miles on each side, 3.4 total. From there, it doesn't get easier. It goes to the south around some mountains through Silverthorne and Frisco. Continuing west, it passes Vale, where the mountains get easier for a bit. Finally, though, it goes through Glenwood Canyon, the most expensive stretch of interstate mile by mile in the country. The highway follows the Colorado River and is forced to go through tunnels, stack on top of itself, and see steep curves to get through. This stretch was completed in 1992 at a cost of $490 million. That would be over $750 million in present day. There are so many different instances of this type of thing around the country, where geography greatly affects highways. There are so many different ways this happens, because every single road has something to do with the geography around it. I'm just pointing out some interesting ones. Thanks for watching. Thank you to the members this week, JL, SirJC17, Bryson, Jerome McCall, Dominic Psyche, Rosebud4, KMS162, Benjamin Whiting, Jeremy Jarvis, Christopher DeAngelis, Darkbird, Elijah Pass, Big Pasty, Jeremy Crone, Wolfling73, Snyder Swine, Florida Jake, Stormy Knight, Nikita Martinoff, Benjamin Whiting, Ryan Devins, and Hazev the Wolf. I appreciate all you guys do for the channel, you really help me out. If you want to become a member, the link is down in the description below or you can click the join button next to the subscribe button. This is just an extra way to give to me if you appreciate the content and you want to support me as a person. All of it goes into my savings so you know you're not giving it to a bad cause. Thank you all very much. I really appreciate it.